way back at the World's Fair of 1964. Back then, chemistry was all the rage. Uh, one of the main themes of this World's Fair was better living through chemistry. So much, in fact, that DuPont actually made The Wonderful World of Chemistry a musical review. <laughs> <laughs> now we move into uh, in the present day. We see we have uh, products now whose slogans are such things as this Jamba energy drink here. Uh, all the energy without the chemistry. Now, if you know anything about how everything works, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a moronic statement, but nonetheless, it's, it's on their commercials. So now chemicals have kind of become synonymous with toxic, poison, unnatural, or straight up just bad. And now, where did this perception come from? Well, to be honest with you, chemistry does have a few, uh, few skeletons in our closet. There are certain chemicals like chemical warfare in the First and Second World War, and the big guy DDT here. Now DDT was a uh, pesticide used way too much, um, which I found out turned out to be not very good for, uh, for human beings. But it's one of these uh, examples where chem chemical compounds being used without fully understanding what, it's, uh, what, it's, what it does. So what this does is basically it makes all the other non-chemists where they see these big long chemical names run and scream. Far away, as far away from these, these chemicals as we can. And this has kind of turned into a, coin, uh, a phrase that has been coined as a... Uh, chemophobia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is essentially the fear of chemicals, or the, the, the fear of, of what's in everything we, we use day to day. With these big long chemical names. Um, which, if you're not a chemist, you're unfamiliar with. Even, some, even us chemists get unfamiliar with them, because some of them are just too complex. Uh, so I'm going to talk quickly about a story of this chemophobia. So, in the news last year, there was this big hoopla about uh, Johnson's baby shampoo, where a group of uh, concerned, if ill-informed Ill mothers, found out there was a certain chemical in this, in this shampoo called formaldehyde. Now, formaldehyde is the chemical that's going to be shown up here in just a second. Uh, is basically it's a preserving agent. If you ever see any of the horror movies, all the body parts are put in formaldehyde and you preserve them and stuff like that. But if you if you just YouTube Johnson baby shampoo, the title of the videos are stuff like Johnson and Johnson is poisoning your baby. So you know Johnson Johnson is bad for you. But let's look at something we're good. We, we're supposed to have apple day teach the doctor away, right? We look at well, what are apples consisted of? Chemicals. <laughs> And the thousands, if not hundreds, if not thousands of chemicals are just in, in an apple naturally. Not the pesticide that goes around it, but actually in the apple itself. So if you look at it, here's just a, a quick, brief list of what's in there. You see things like acetone, methanol, formic acid. Not even good for you. Oh, you might mention in the middle there formaldehyde. So I got the question well, formaldehyde's in apples, but we eat apples every day. Formaldehyde's in this Johnson baby uh, shampoo, but that's bad. Well, let me go look at, well, one versus the other, what's worse for us? <laughs> so we have Johnson's baby shampoo has formaldehyde in it, but we also know apples have formaldehyde in it. Well, we gotta look at well, which one do you think has more formaldehyde in it? Or more of these hazardous chemicals in them? And as it turns out, in a second here, it's the apple. <laughs> the apple has more formaldehyde in it than the baby shampoo. So if Johnson & Johnson is poisoning your babies, these mothers are doing a much quicker job of poisoning themselves, giving them the apple applesauce. <laughs> so, we need to look at some perspective here when we start talking about the chemicals in our compounds. And as a result of, of ideas like this, companies start putting 100% chemical free on things. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, if you're buying something 100% chemical free, you're not getting a very good deal. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, unless, unless you're in the market for vacuums, so just empty space, then then you're good to go. The question with that is, I already touched on before, is, well, what, what are chemicals? What is, where are chemicals? What are chemicals used for? And the quick answer to that is everything. The, the screen on Morgan's computer, the, the seats you're sitting on, the clothes I'm wearing, the beers you're drinking, guess what they're mixed up? Thousands and thousands of chemicals. There's over four billion known chemicals in the world. Here's just uh, the periodic table of elements, so you can see all the different, all the different elements uh, accommodate things that they're used in. So we have silicon in computer chips. We have oxygen, we breathe it. Also very poisonous to ourselves in high quantities. 
you can actually poison yourself to death with too much oxygen. Uh, and chemical breakthroughs have helped improve our way of life, such as uh, ammonia, the Haber process back in the World War I, uh, helped to increase crop yields significantly. So chemistry does help us in our day-to-day -day lives. And ammonia... Well, I'll stop. I could get into another story, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave that for after. So what... It's not just the public or, or non-chemists who... Us chemists can look down on and say, oh, you don't understand it. We have our own duty to go out there into the, into the talk to the non-chemists and help, to, help explain to them how these, how these chemicals interact or how, at what level, do they become dangerous. So rather than us chemists kind of sitting back in our labs, mixing stuff, chuckling at all the, the uninitiated, what we need to be is we actually need to be like this and break through that chemophobia and be the, kind of that ray of light, that ray of information uh, to, to the... To the I don't want to say common folk, but I'll use it. <laughs> uh, it, it really helped people get over this, this fear of chemicals. And kind of one of the, the important things I want to get across is, is chemicals are inanimate. They don't have conscious, they don't choose to be good or bad, um, and they're not to be feared or worshipped. All we have to do is understand them. If you understand them, we can use them appro appro uh, correctly, um, and we'll hopefully not have any issues with them. So, in conclusion, I just want to stop uh, by saying, well, if, you, if you're one of these people with uh, chemophobia, you're afraid of chemicals, get over it, because you, you're not going to uh, get away from them. You're pretty much stuck with them for the rest of your life. Alright? Thanks.